as an educator. I've been known to spit the flows and make it shaky, shaky thing. Pop and lock and stop and let it hang. Watch us as we drop this hip hop, it's like a stain. We make the whole room drop and everybody sang. We want the funk. We gotta have that funk. When we kick it old school, we think we're so cool. We take it back to the past, we gonna act a fool. Ah, no jumps, the middle finger, make my egg adjust. Sports Buzz, the fanatical view. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio on this Thursday, December 19th. We are definitely back at oh, live. Oh, we are back live. And, uh, the weather's we were, been nice and warm. It was pretty warm today. Warming up a little bit. Supposed to get warmer and warmer as this weekend goes on. All the snow we've gotten might be washed away. Say it isn't so. No white Christmas. I mean, we should get the payoff of a white Christmas after dealing with all the snow. Wow. So we'll keep our eye on the rain and the temperatures rising. I think it's supposed to get chilly again by Christmas, though. So Yeah, they said we might have a little bit of light snow maybe on Christmas Eve. Oh, so. well, that could provide some uh, interesting yeah. circumstances. Uh, there, of course, are the docile tones of my man, uh, Bob Broad Jr. How are you, Scott? <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, are you done with your Christmas shopping yet? Bob? Almost. I uh, still have a decent amount to do. I've got some done. But I, uh, I got to get back out there. Yeah. Um, we know you have a new lucky lady in your life, so you better take care of oh, business. Oh, yes, I problem. do. Don't slip up on this, uh, no, no. Everything on is... this Christmas shopping thing. No, we're, we're all set. <laughs> all right. And, uh, of course, Bob's show, Spotlight on Tuesday nights at 9, Wednesdays afternoons at 12 o'clock. Uh, Mike Tui in the studio running things. His show, Expose Cinema. Friday nights at 9, Wednesdays at 1. I have actually been sitting in and helping direct his shows yeah, lately. Yeah, I've, I've seen some of the, some interesting stuff. I guess I haven't been messing up too bad. He keeps yeah. asking me to come back and help out. So uh, you can check out his show. He's got a lot of hard-hitting news, current yeah. events, topics, my things you need to know. My show for the next two weeks will be just, you know, will be my Christmas, our Christmas show, so. Christmas show? Or? Yeah, light from uh, down at the Danbury Library. We had the Light the Lights a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. Good deal. Did you make it over to Bethel for their tree lighting? No, I didn't. That's always a good event as well. That was a cold, cold night that night when that happened. Um, and Peter Green is in studio this week. Um, I, he has yet to slip me a Peter Green stab of the week. Oh, I'm, 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 we I'm, got, I'm shocked. Uh, we're a couple minutes into the oh, show. Wait a minute, we've wait got about 26 wait a minute. I hear, minutes I hear left or so. <laughs> um, if he comes up with something, he can slip me a note. 203 792 4101 is the number if you want to call in. Wish us a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all that. This is our officially last right. show of, of 2013. Season. We will be back oh. January 2nd to do our year in review show. Yes. Um, and of course, it's going to be difficult to pull that off because uh, there'll be the football season will have ended at that point, and there will be a lot to talk about with football as well. But uh, we might we might go ahead and put that on the back burner. And, just go for a full 30 minute year in review like we usually do. We'll figure it out and we'll be back for you just after the new year. Uh, hopefully we won't be hung over. Let me quickly start about the Whalers. Quick mo note on the Whalers as yeah. we get a lot to get to. Uh, a lot of new players went to a Christmas, their Christmas party last night. Uh -huh. A lot of new guys, a lot of new faces. And uh, how are they doing right now? So they're, the, uh... they're in first place in the, uh, uh, the four team league. Four-team league, yeah. mm, you know. You know, it's it is what it is. But they are still drawing the big crowds. Yes. Uh, so the fan interest is there. So that's the most important thing. As long as they have fan support, uh, uh, they got to keep running out there and playing. Yep. And uh, you know, we know their coach is a no-nonsense guy. So he's going right. to get the guys playing hard no matter what the circumstances. Uh, and, Friday they're playing Dayton, and Sun, and then on Saturday they're playing Danville. So the weekend leading into Christmas, if uh, you're out and about in the Danbury area, you can check out those first place whalers. And uh, at they're the having Ice a Arena. special game on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve game? Yes, at 5.05. Really? Yes. And that will lead into the whole first night Danbury yes. Uh, event? Yes. That's pretty cool. Five o'clock, you can yeah. head on over to the Ice Arena, see the uh, hockey game, and then roll right out into the streets of Danbury as all their uh, activities are going on. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff happening over in the uh, downtown Danbury area for uh, they usually do a pretty good job. Palace Theater yeah, got something going on, I, I would imagine. I think so. I'm not, I'm not sure about all the details. All right, well, years. keep your eyes 
open on that. Uh, check your local listings as it were to see what the events are and uh, get out there on New Year's Eve. All right, let's get right into uh, football, Bob. That's where we're going to start this week as we got two weeks left in the season and Thank things God are pretty for, tight. Uh, for, for my Giants, I only got two more weeks of pain. Oh, well, <laughs> for your Giants and the uh, JETS, 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 there really are no more weeks of the season. I no. guess the big question is will Eli even play this week? They do play the Lions, and it's an important game for the Lions, uh, so they should play Eli, although Victor Cruz is out now as well. Yeah, well, uh, they said he might be. Uh, he had arthroscopic yeah. knee surgery today, right? Yeah. So he's so, definitely out. Yeah. So, um, you know, the Giants and the Jet seasons are over, but there are plenty of things going on. Uh, is Peter Green trying to slip me a note? Yes, he is. Well, he better slip it instead of hovering over me. All right, Peter Green, that's his, uh, the stat of the week. <laughs> J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. I don't know, can I say this word on... Uh, go, go for it. We could say... Uh, we could say. <laughs> They're not good is what he's trying to oh, say. Uh, we're a uh, bunch of bums? A bunch of bums. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right, let's get serious about this. Let's go AFC. We, uh, you know, the Broncos started the week off by getting knocked off by the Chargers right. who kept their playoff uh, season alive or hopes alive with a big win in Denver. Uh, and they really manhandled the Broncos in that oh, game, opened the door for the Patriots to uh, move into uh, the number one seed because they had that tiebreaker against the Broncos. Uh, but the Patriots could not uh, walk through that open door no. as they went down to Miami and uh, could not come up with the last second victory. Right there was the chance. Amendola could have ingratiated himself to Patriot fans forever if he could have held on to that game-winning would-be touchdown, was knocked out of his hands in the end zone there. And the Dolphins came up with a huge win. They moved to eight and six. They keep pace with the Ravens, who uh, the Patriots now get to face in this uh, big matchup. No stranger uh, to Ravens, Patriots, big games, uh, as they always seem to match up uh, in these seasons. Yes, and they got they a big do. game down in Baltimore, who came up with a win without scoring a touchdown on Monday night against Detroit. I know. Five field goals, Five including field goals. a 61-yard game winner. Yeah. And the Lions fall to 7-7 seven and seven as uh, they just keep floundering as they fall behind now in the standings. The Bears move ahead of them in the NFC, but we'll stay in the AFC. Well, right there we see Cutler came back. Uh, and it looked a little dicey in the first yeah. half as he was uh, not playing that great against the Browns. Uh, but he did rally and he did come up with the goods. They did uh, outlast the Browns. They move into first place. Um, and let's just stick right there. The Packers uh, came up with the big, huge rally. The Cowboys, Bob, yeah, what unbelievable. What this team just finds new and improved ways to lose. Yeah. Thankfully for them and everybody else, they do still have their cheerleaders yeah. on full display right there. Yeah, I mean, they, otherwise, I don't know. The what else are, are we looking at if we're watching <laughs> Cowboy games other yeah. than their cheerleaders? Yeah. Because the team is it's a disaster. Just... How many interceptions can Tony Romo throw? Unbelievable. The Packers down 26 to 3, I believe it was, yeah. at halftime. They score five consecutive touchdowns. Yeah. Not just five consecutive possessions in the second half. They scored touchdowns oh, in all yeah. those possessions. Oh, yeah. To come all the way back and beat the Cowboys. Cowboys fall to 7-7. Seven and seven. The Eagles, who had lost to the Vikings, that was a brutal loss by them. Uh, they were not harmed by that loss as they still remain a game up on the Cowboys. Uh, so, you know, they're still ahead of them. The it Cowboys... It's just know, been... The NFC has been crazy. The, the whole, Packers the whole... go to seven six and one, right. which actually puts them a half a game ahead of Detroit. Detroit is suddenly on the outside looking in. I mean, the Bears and the Packers were playing with backup quarterbacks for the last, you know, four or five right. weeks, six weeks, and uh, the Lions could not take advantage of this. They are a terrible, terrible. team. They get the Redskins this weekend. Or no, I mean they get the Giants this weekend at Detroit. Hey, hey we're gonna get one. We're gonna get. A, we're gonna get a win. It doesn't matter. You could play spoiler right yeah. there, Bob, because the Lions now need that win big time. Um, and the Packers 
are playing the Steelers in a rare, almost exclusively, I went through all the schedules, it's almost exclusively exclusively conference versus conference. Oh. The one game that stands out, Steelers at Packers. Right. Not, uh, you know, AFC versus NFC. Everybody else is playing within their conference or division uh, in these last two weeks. That is the one game uh, that stands out right there. So Steelers go to the Packers. Steelers actually are still alive because I believe they have tiebreakers yeah, somehow against the Dolphins and the and the uh, Ra- and the uh, Ravens. Right. Although they lost to the Dolphins, but I don't know. I keep hearing they're still alive at six and eight. I don't buy that much into that. But they go to the Packers. Uh, the Bears are at the Eagles Sunday night. That game got flexed to the Sunday night game, 8 o'clock. Uh, so that's a big game right there. And Giants at Lions. So that's a big slate of events right there. We'll stay in the NFC since that's where we ended up. Um, we saw those Panthers photos. Uh, they did beat up on the Jets, officially ending their season. And the Saints end up going to St. Louis. And they uh, lose right there. Yeah, that was You know, a- everybody felt that the Saints... We know they have troubles on the road outside, but they felt like, you know, going to St. Louis, Louis. it was another dome team, and that they would not really slip up in the dome of St. Louis, but they did. Lackluster performance after they beat the Panthers in the head-to-head matchup the week before. Now they come back, and they go to Carolina. They undid the good thing they did by beating them up on that uh, Monday night game because the Panthers come back with a win. They come back with a loss, so they are back tied. Uh, in the standings, so if Carolina can beat them in Carolina, and the Saints, you know, they could let this whole thing slip away. They could turn into a wild card team quickly, and uh, that would be bad news for them because they need. Oh, are we losing our UConn banner? The UConn flag decided much just like slid. the UConn basketball <laughs> team, team last oh, night. That was. We'll get to that in a moment. Hold on. UConn flag going down, going much down. like the Huskies for the first time last year. <laughs> um, so a lot of stuff going on, obviously, in the NFC. Uh, the 49ers do win again. They're tied right now for that final playoff wild card spot, 10-4. and four. Seattle beat up on the Giants, shut them out. First time Giants shut out at home. Yeah. This must be in the regular season because I do yeah. recall a Carolina shutout in New York yeah. in the playoffs oh, yeah. in the early 2000s. Uh, But 95, last time in the regular season, they were shut out at home. Five interceptions, Bob, for Eli Manning. What say you about this? Well, all I can say is that, hey, him and Tony Romo got a lot in common. (laughs) Ugly, ugly, ugly. I got a big question this week, Bob. What's that? Semifinals, Money League, Fantasy. Oh, yeah, how are they doing? Well, I'm there, ready to go. I'm playing the hottest team in the league. A uh, guy who was running hot, scored over 200 points in his uh, divisional round matchup last week uh, as he had Jamal Charles go for five touchdowns right. in his game, plus a whole bunch of other guys. So my decision is this, Bob. Do I stick with Tony Romo, who's helped me get to first place? Or do I go with Kirk Cousins off the bench for mm. Washington in that matchup in Washington? against Uh, that pathetic Dallas defense. The Skins defense isn't that great either. It's a flip of the coin here. You know, you take one Weather forecast, warm and big rain and thunder, perhaps, in that game. For Washington? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Dicey situation. Who do I go with? I'm I'm about ready to pull the plug on Romo and say, you know what, he's helped me out, but I've been winning despite him kind of in the second half of the season. That and, rubber uh, band can only stretch for so long. <laughs> I, I might have to pull the trigger. I might have well, I might have to do it. We'll see. All right, so the NFC picture, um, you know, Seattle, I think, has got the whole thing wrapped up. They're home for their final two weeks against division opponents. Uh, the Cardinals, who have been gritty, gutty, and uh, they did gut out another win against the Titans in overtime. And they're right there at 9-5, and five, a game behind Carolina and uh, San Francisco, but they go to Seattle this right. week. That could end their situation right there. Um, they do play at home against the 49ers in the last week. So if they can get some help, the Falcons are at the 49ers this week. 49ers should win that game. Ooh, um, um, so Arizona's gonna have to 
beat Seattle in Seattle, really, to keep their season alive, that'll be difficult. Who's on tonight? Uh, no games tonight. No this game is it. Tonight. Thursday night games are over. No Saturday night game either. It's all Sunday and Monday night. Um, the Monday night game um, is a big one. Who is that Monday night game is a good question. It is Atlanta at San Francisco. That's the Monday night game. Um, Bears at Eagles. Big game right there. Eagles could wrap up the whole thing. If they win this week, I think they. Uh, it doesn't matter. They get right. the Cowboys in that final week of the year at Dallas. Hmm. So the Eagles don't want to slip up. They want to beat down the Bears. But we could see a matchup in the final week. Packers at Bears for the division, Bob. Ooh, if the Packers can uh, hold on and win at home against Pittsburgh, um, they could end up beating the Bears in the final week to win. Rodgers still not active yet. Is no. he going to play? We do not know. If the Panthers beat the Saints, they get the Falcons at Atlanta in their final week, so they could wrap up the division if they can pull that off. Um, the Saints are home against the Bucks in their final week. So a lot going on. I think Seattle definitely has home field wrapped up. The biggest uh, topsy-turvy situation is uh, Philly and Dallas still, right. and the Packers, Bears, and Lions with uh, the wild card still a little bit up in the air. Are the Saints going to fall? Uh, will the Panthers slip all the way by them? And can the Cardinals somehow, some way, find their way in? AFC also up in the air. The Chiefs are now back tied with Denver at 11 and three, but the Broncos have the tiebreaker, um, you know, because they beat them in both head-to-head -head matchups. But the Broncos have to continue to win to hold them off. They are at the Texans this week, and then they finish. Uh, the Broncos do at the Raiders. Favorable schedule for the Broncos. I figure they probably still end up with the one seed and they hold off the Chiefs. The Colts are at the Chiefs this weekend. That's a tough matchup, I think. Yeah. The Colts had a decent performance last week, you know, against a bad team, the Texans. Right. But um, Trent Richardson actually played well for the first time, so maybe they get something going. Maybe they get back on track. Um, and then the Chiefs uh, finish at the Chargers, who are still desperately trying to get in. Uh, a game behind here. If the Patriots can knock off the Ravens, if the uh, Bills at home can knock yeah, off we, the Dolphins. We, we, we don't uh, hear very much about that other New York team, do we? No, we don't. Uh, but they've been okay. They've been a competitive team this year, Bob. They're not bad at 5-9. and nine. They had yeah. a win this weekend. Um, so they could pull the upset against Miami. And if the Chargers can win at home against the Raiders, they all of a sudden move in. So the Chargers are definitely in the mix here, all depending right. on what happens. And uh, of course, the Patriots losing in Miami, that hurt them bad. Yeah. But then the Bengals went ahead and lost to Pittsburgh on the Sunday night. Bengals just can't stand prosperity. They had no. the opportunity to move into the two seed, Bob, because yeah. uh, the Patriots lost and they have the tiebreaker against the Patriots. But they couldn't handle that. They were down like 20 to nothing early in that game, and uh, they could not rally and come back. Vikings are at the Bengals this weekend. Ravens at Bengals. And that could also be for the division, Bob. If the Ravens can beat the Patriots this weekend, right. they could catch Cincinnati uh, for first place even and move all the way up possibly to a two seed, which would be stunning. Colts could also get a two seed if the Patriots stumble. Um, Colts are at Chiefs and home for the Jags in the end. So a lot to be decided in the final two weeks. Um, I think the Broncos have the upper hand in the AFC for first place, uh, number one seed, and their division. Chiefs will probably end up being the wild card unless something crazy happens. Right. But, you know, the Broncos, you know, the Chargers really played physical with them. Maybe the Viking, or maybe one of these teams, uh, the Texans, no way they're going to lose to the Texans. No. But Texans did score a bunch of points against the Patriots, uh, even a losing effort a couple weeks ago. And the Broncos' defense gives up a lot of points as well. And, uh, you know, Broncos at Raiders. Raiders are a division rivalry team. They're scoring a lot of points. They're giving up a ton of points. Right. So you never know in the NFL what might happen. All right, let's, uh, we don't get that much time left. So let's change gears real quick. Talk some basketball? Well, since that UConn flag is falling down, maybe we'll, we'll talk quickly about the basketball game last night. Which was 
Halftime, looking good, 38-28, UConn at home and against then, Stanford. They ended up pushing that lead to 13 early in the second half, and then that was it. Then, it, then something happened. They just, like, somebody put the brakes on. Well, I'll admit it. They put me to sleep. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to stay up and watch this game. It was a late tip, 9 o'clock yeah. uh, game at home on the East Coast, which was, which was strange that it would be a late tip, but it was a TV thing. And uh, they just go horrifically in the second half. 25, 13 points they scored in the second half. Yeah. Um, outscored by 12, and they lose by two. Um, and Shabazz Napier had three chances in the final minute. No uh, late game heroics for him. We've seen plenty of that out of him in this now nine and one season. Mm. They were number 10 going into that game. And now they head out west to take on Washington Ooh. before coming back home for a game I will be at in Bridgeport oh. Saturday, December 28th. I will be at that game at 1 o'clock affair, I believe. Uh, but really, they didn't handle the 1-2-1-1 uh, uh, nah. one, one press or uh, zone defense that Stanford threw at them in the second half. Shot selection was terrible. Um, they got lazy with the basketball, some bad turnovers. Stanford went on a 14-0 run, Bob, and really it was about their defense because it took a while for them to get those 14 oh, yeah. points. It was just that UConn wasn't scoring at no, all. they were just Ice running. cold, poor shot selection. Uh, they were really settling for long shots, and they missed a bunch of shots when they did get inside the lane. I thought there could have been a few fouls called as they got to the rim, and uh, Stanford uh, came up with some blocks. Um, you know, there was some contact I thought that could have helped stem the tide, but they didn't get those calls, and uh, they really uh, they went to sleep in the second half, and they lose this game. So their first loss of the year. Um, you know, they did have the long holiday break uh, and finals for the college kids right. were going on last week, so they hadn't played in like 10 days. So maybe a little rusty, the late tip, who knows. But it was not a good game for them. They're going to look to bounce back quickly as they uh, head out west for that long trip. Um, Arizona remains your number one team. Syracuse number two. Uh, Big Ten rounding out the top uh, five there, Bob. Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Michigan State. Defending champion Louisville, number six. NBA action. -y. I watched uh, the Knicks and Celtics game Friday right. night? Friday night. I did watch the end of that game. And the Knicks, I don't know what they were thinking. You had you, you had enough, you had an extra timeout, you had time to give, you know, and he just <laughs> doesn't take the time out at the Jeff Green drives the lane, hoop in the harm. Yeah. Knicks can't find the knack. Celtics win that one, take that home and home series, beat them twice in one week. Yeah. Um, to uh, end their little two-game losing streak, we, uh, they had lost to old friends Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, and then they lost to old friend Doc Rivers, who made his return to Boston. And the Boston fans, after a long off-season of hard feelings, Doc finally, finally admitting that he did walk out on the team um, for uh, the LA Clippers. Um, he came back and the fans of Boston stood up and cheered. They gave him the big applause, uh, turned into an emotional event. It was a good game. Um, the Clippers did hold them off late, and uh, they came up with the victory as they did win that game. Uh, but they did bounce back after losing two, uh, those two games. They beat the, uh, they beat the uh, Knicks. They did lose a tough one last night, a one-point game yeah. to Detroit. Old UConn friend Andre Drummond who is uh, one of the most talked about players in the NBA, Bob. Um, you know, after the new year, as we get farther into the NBA season, we're going to talk more about the former Huskies in the league. Oh, speaking Drum of which. Drummond is a hot commodity. This guy is a big time player right now in his second year for Detroit. And one oh. of our former uh, players just got traded, right? Rudy Gay traded from Toronto to Sacramento, sat town. Shaquille O'Neal is in that front office there. Yeah. He pulled Rudy Gay in. They need him because they're like seven and uh, 17 or something. It seems like the whole, uh, like everybody has not got a good record this year. Well, Western Conference not as bad as the Eastern Conference. Three teams now above 500 in the Eastern Conference <laughs> as the Hawks move above 500. Of course, last night the Heat rallied. Pacers blew that game, Bob. 10-0 oh. uh, run, they were up by eight. Uh, by Miami in Indiana as uh, the Heat rally to come behind, uh, back 
and beat the Pacers. Pacers 20 and 5, Heat 19 and 6. Um, you know, so those two teams, the Hawks 14 and 12. The Bobcats with other Huskies, Kemba Walker, buzzer beater last night, yeah. 29 points. Um, and he's got his other guys, Jeff Adrian and Ben Gordon, on that team in Charlotte. They're at 12 and 14. Not bad. Pistons, I mentioned with Andre Drummond, 13 and 14. Lay Wiz. The Wizards, yeah. they beat the Nets and the Knicks uh, this Ooh. past week. They're 11 and 13. Celtics still in first place at 12 and 15 <laughs> in the Atlantic Division. The Nets have won some games lately. They did lose that one uh, to the Nets last night. So they think they're five and two in their last seven as they are trying to get back on track. They still are nine and 16, however. The Brick Cities, yeah. eight and 17, despite their double OT win. Tyson Chandler returned last night against the Bucks. Um, they needed to go double OT against the Bucks, who are five and 20. Bob, yeah. double OT to beat yeah. a five and 20 team. Yeah, it's a start for the Bricks. They'll take any win they can get. Uh, out in the West, isn't there some Surprise. breaking news? Oh yes. Uh, first of all, let's mention a quick nod to uh, Rose City. Portland Trailblazers back on the map, Bob, 22 and five. Wow. The surprising team of the year. And Jeremy Lamb, another UConn player, getting big play for the OKC Thunder. Um, he is actually getting quality minutes more and more each game. They are 20 and four. Spurs 25, clip joint 18 and nine. The Rockets with that big trade, of course, bringing in Howard 17 and nine. They're a little iffy. Uh, D Mavs, a little iffy, 15 right. and 10, but they're back in the mix with Dirk Nowitzki, who I love. Phoenix Suns, another surprise team. They were supposed to be one of the tanking teams. They're 14 and 10, Bob. All right. Nuggets have actually got off to a bad start, but have played much better lately. They're 14 and 10. Warriors slipping. Yeah. Warriors, come on, come out to play. 14 and 12. Uh, breaking news is that Kobe Bryant, after coming back, Lakers going what one and five with yeah. him. He is now out six weeks, big knee injury. He rushed back from that torn Achilles uh, to get back on the court, and he uh, has damaged his knee severely. He's out at least six weeks. Good news is he just signed that big contract right. extension for 40 plus million for two years. So he's got his money. Kobe show be defined in that fake show as they are 12 and 13, and they will be slipping out of uh, the situation. I guess we did not leave enough time Nine, for 15. hockey talk, which so, is probably a good thing because right. your Rangers aren't doing good. Right. Bruins in first place in their division. Uh, Penguins, the top team in the East. Blackhawks in the West uh, doing good. Yammer Yager, yeah. one goal behind your man, Mark Messier, yes. for seventh on the all-time list with his 693rd goal last night. Well, Happy holidays, holidays to everybody. Have a good holiday, Scott. We'll see you next next year. Thank you to all that take part of the show and everybody who tunes in every week. We will see you in the new year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas.